<laughs> Welcome into the Command Center Podcast. I'm Logan Paulson here with Santana Moss. And again, impeccable fit. And then Fred Smoot, who literally just saved my life. I was having a little bit of a neck crank. Couldn't turn my head past, like, you know, right here. Yeah. And Fred got me right. Put I, that bow in I, there. I told you, I used to be a masseuse in the early 70s. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I could where, see where, muscle where, nuts. Tell them where yeah, you're South yeah, America. South America. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, man. I feel like I haven't this, seen you guys. This is how he started our day. Yeah, just <laughs> one of his time, tall tales. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I met Pablo Escobar down there, too. Um, I did. So, yeah, what you been up to? I feel like I haven't talked to you in a while, Fred. Uh, I've been good, man. Did you know Pablo Escobar actually had hippos that still loose to this day that in South the, America? They're the only, they're the wild hippo population yes. of Colombia. Yeah, they they're are. the only ones that exist out there, or yeah. is it just... They've, and they've and brought like, up. Hippos are not supposed to be there, but he had, he had, had pet hippos, and now they have multiplied, <laughs> and now they're having a hippo problem. Well, you might have to thank him for that, because, you know... You <laughs> but, you know, hippos kill people, problem. you know, right? Well, I know that, but I'm just saying, we was talking about how many different animals there are endangered species now. Now, and yeah. hippos are one of them that you say well, they're not around that much. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, cool. So thanks, Pablo. Pop, uh, thanks, Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> how, how funny is that? that like, he just, he, I want some hippos, man. It always cracks me up, man, when I, you see like a drug lord. I want a tiger. Because uh, uh, like, hey, guess okay. what? When you make it to that pinnacle where you just got so much money, you got to think of things to buy. <laughs> you know what? Get, get me a draft. It's, <laughs> like, uh, it's like Bezos buying like that yacht that's like a city, and you're like, do you need that? Like, Probably I not. have nothing else to do. Yeah, yeah. Like, like just... Bezos probably wake up in the morning. Mm. But you gotta think, st- <laughs> something like that is like such a write off. He probably uh, writing, yeah, no, he I... probably writing off so many billions with that big old city yard. Same, like, so I heard he just he doesn't actually pay cash or anything. He just mm-hmm. takes out loans, Bingo. pays them. Then when the loan, then he just takes another loan to pay that off because he's got so much equity yeah. in stocks. Yeah. yeah. So he never actually is spending any of his yeah. own he money. He's getting all. He's getting all his. If I was Bezos, I'd just wake up and be interest. like, you know what? Let's buy Idaho. Because <laughs> nobody ever goes to Idaho. Like Why, well, I'm on buying like Hawaii or something. I'm just, I'm just Idaho. Think about this. Who have you ever met somebody from Idaho? Because I haven't. Yeah, I think the quarterback co- or the tight end, Duke tight end coach is from. No, no, Idaho. I'm thinking of Iowa. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah, nobody knows anybody. Yeah, from Idaho. but uh, again, like, I wonder how much it would cost to buy Idaho. No, like buy a $63. state. Buy a state. Oh, like if you're like, I want to buy Hawaii. Yeah. Like, what are we talking about? What would be the cheapest state in America? Probably Alaska. Eh? No. No, not without them natural resources. Uh, it well, would probably be Dakota, one of the Dakotas. I uh, mean, uh, maybe the worst state in America is New Mexico. Uh, it it you're is. You're going to just make a lot of New Mexicans mad, man. I'm not. But New <laughs> Mexico, have you been to New Mexico? Albuquerque? No. Worst capital our, city one anywhere. Of our, one of our family friends will, like, if she heard you say that, she would just, she'd spill your coffee all over you. Uh, like, uh, Have you ever like heard BC somebody say, I'm really? going to vacation? Careful, no. Have you ever heard somebody say, I'm going to New Mexico? Have you ever met a friend well, they or have, anybody? They have a... Um, Nothing. Taco they Bell. They have that, that tram there, right? That is the highest elevated tram in the United States. Fun fact about New Mexico. Don't ask me. I don't know nothing about New Don't know why I know that. New that's Mexico a, got a, a lot of yeah. dust and a lot of cactus. That's true. Um, yeah, how much did they pay? How much did the United States pay for Alaska? Jason, can we look that up real quick and just get back to me whenever you feel appropriate? Did we buy Alaska from Russia? Yeah, from Russia. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> it used to be connected to Russia. <laughs> oh, my Ain't nothing gosh. dude don't know. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh, yeah. <laughs> did we buy Alaska from Russia? Hey, Jason, what we got? <laughs> Seven point two million in eighteen sixty seven. We oh, just yeah. paid a running back that. <laughs> <laughs> so we basically bought Alaska for a running back. That's what you're telling us. But I'm sure. I'm, but I'm sure it's worth how much now? Oh, billions of dollars. Yeah, All right. the oil we get from that's there. What I'm saying. Like, it's, like you got to realize. But do you think they hey, go into the whole got, thing Jason, of saying I'm gonna buy this because the resources? Do they know already? They didn't know the resources. I, I feel like that go. was a strategic buy to like insulate to, to, for military purposes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, just to okay. get us defense. 1865. That was a long time ago. That was a long time 1867. Ago. I knew yeah. a dude who, who was born in 1889. Yeah, you wow. said wow. you met him. <laughs> <laughs> Was that not the funniest? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Lord have mercy. We, we had to say that for another day. Yeah, all right. <laughs> he right, been a hundred year old man. <laughs> in 2017, that was 125 million. So Inflation's Bezos, gone up since then. I know, but so Bezos more, could but, buy that. Like, so t- say it again. Up. That was a hundred and how much? It, first of all, Magic Johnson could say, you know what? I need Alaska. Yeah, just give me Alaska. <laughs> yeah, seven point two million in 1867. That's 
today about 125 million. Oh, that's a that's a that's a deal. Much, it's been in the bowl for some of these big. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a deal, man. Alaska. <laughs> yeah. well, that's why you're. That's why people listen to this podcast is for Alaska inflation comments. In New Mexico, the worst <laughs> state in America. Yeah. Uh, just a reminder: you we're brought to you by Bet365 at Bet365. We don't do ordinary. We believe every sport should be epic. Right now, new customers can choose between two offers when they open an account at Bet365. Use the QR code to sign up, deposit ten, and choose between either. First bet safety net offer by placing a bet up to a thousand and if you're qualifying five five whoa if you're qualifying bet loses like you said i was stuttering over that yeah you was qualifying bet loses you receive a match refund and bonus bets or bet and get offer and place a bet of five dollars or more and get 150 in bonus bets whatever the sport whatever the moment it's never ordinary bet 365 official sports betting partner of the washington commanders must be 21 plus and physically located in virginia please gamble responsibly if you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help Call 1-800-GAMBLER, and if you have an extra $7 million, you could buy Alaska in 1863. 67. <laughs> Is that right? That's, that's unbelievable. That's like crazy. If you got an extra $7 million, you know, sitting Go around it. somewhere. Go get it. And uh, so t- on today's show, because we're not talking about money and the country and buying states. I mean, that's a fun thing to talk about. Yeah. But we're talking about, we got big news, guys. Yeah, what's it? We got new coordinators, and they had their press conference. Yes. And so we're going to give our reactions to their press conferences, some things they said. A lot of fans were excited about specific things. And because I can't read very well, yep. as just illustrated by that Thank ad UCLA. read. UCLA. Jason is going to read. Producer Jason is going to read some of these quotes. Hater Jason. we're going to react. Not hater Jason. Urgh. No, I'm not hating at all. I'm pretty excited. But actually, it's not going to be my voice. I'm going to cut in their actual clips here. Oh, nice. Yeah, so you, no one's going to even hear this. Uh-huh. Right, but it's for you guys, all right? First off, you got to have talented players to work with. There's no doubt. I've been very fortunate to be around some really good players, good people. But I just try to figure out what makes them tick. Um, everybody's different. Everybody learns differently. Everybody processes differently, likes different plays, um, sees the game differently. So I really try to get to the uh, bottom of who they are as a person, who they are as a player, and, and build it around them. Yeah, I mean, I love that. I think that's absolutely what you're looking for from a from an offensive head coach. I've been saying from an offensive mind, yeah. y'all too, how y'all feel about a statement like that? I, I mean, I think that's exactly right. I think one of the things we've, uh, Santa and I have talked about like offline a little bit over the last couple of years is just maximizing <coughs> playmakers, like yeah. maximizing skill sets. And I think like when I hear him say stuff like that and I hear Dan say like we're looking for unique skill sets, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? We're looking for unique skill sets, and then you get a guy who's saying, I'm here to learn the individual mm-hmm. and then maximize the individual. Like Basically, like Tana, I'm, I'm going to have Tana do something very specific because of what he does really well. Yeah. I'm going to have me as a player. Like I'm not going to be running all these go routes. I'm going to yeah. be blocking nine techniques. Like, yeah. That's why I'm on the team. right? Yeah. So understanding what guys do, I think, is paramount to making productive offense. And just to put it in context, it's almost like if you was here in 05, what they did with me when I got here. Mm-hmm. You know, Coach Gibbs them saw something in what I was able to do in my frame and said, well, he's not the average wide receiver that you just line up outside. Let's yeah. move him around. Let's yeah. put him in the backfield. What you see today's game has yeah. kind of transformed to. So I love it because you that's what you see. You see on when you turn the screen on now to watch the NFL, watch offenses in the, in the NFL, it's almost looking at – uh, I guess you can say a college playbook on steroids. Yeah, sort of. It say. is because these guys are now more mature, and these coaches are like instead of them putting them into this system that I so called my system or my way of doing things. Let me, you know, uh, magnify you. Yeah. magnify what he does with what I can do with him. You know, with my offense. So I love it, and then not you know not only just you know elaborating on what he's saying, but just what they're doing as a whole. You know, they bring him in because of his offensive mind mm-hmm. and how he did things already on this level, but then you brought in two other offensive guys that one going to have the run game, yeah. the other guy who has, you know, a little bit with the run in the pass game. With all ex-head coaches. I all these it. guys yeah. are ex-head coaches. All these guys are, I guess you can say, at the top echelon of their 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 feel, mm-hmm. feel mm-hmm. and how they play the game offensively, mm-hmm. and it's going to make us that, like, you know, how that Voltron, you know, yeah, yeah. When Ooh. our powers combine, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, 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 listen, yeah, so it's hard to stop when you yeah. combine <laughs> like that. And that's what I'm saying. I'm hoping we get a little of that San Francisco run game yeah. Yeah. here. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm praying. I'm, I'm hoping we, we get the uh, the way he like to push the ball down and a little of that air raid. Uh, I, I like the air raid quick throws and big old wonders that we gonna mm-hmm. create with the run game. I like a little bit of it all. I just, I'm ready to see it. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm ready to see what he does with a guy like Terry. Yeah, all right? yeah. Somebody that's 
I almost been featured, but never really featured, yeah. if you know what I mean. Like, yeah. I know when I'm playing against a, a wide receiver that's featured, because it's harder to check them, because mm -hmm. he going to have around. 10 chances to burn me. Yeah. I know this. Like, some guys, I, I'm going to check. I know for a fact, like, They'll throw it to him when they can, but they're not focusing right. on getting him the ball. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm eager to see how he focuses on, on, on some of the guys that we do have. I think that's right. I think the great thing is you said you want to see him do it. And to Tana's point, I think you've seen him do it. Like in 2021, like we watched a lot of that film yeah. getting ready for the show this week. Uh, what's that show called? Command Center. Check out Command Center. That's week. Mm -hmm. Check it out. Awesome. Yep. Coordinator special. Yep. Um, but you've seen... It comes out tomorrow. Yes, thank you. And then I think the thing is you saw him do it, right? You saw yeah. him kind of evolve his offense. Say, hey, how do I maximize Rondell Moore? How do I get him touches in space on the quick screen? Connor and, stuff? and you know, them guy. How, yep. Yeah, Connor had a great resurgence. Yeah. <laughs> A.J. Green, you know, everyone thought he was kind of cooking. He you was watched, 90 years old. But you watch the film of him, and it's like, I like him on the vertical route. True, we're going to him on posts and goes. And we got a quarterback in Kyler Murray that throws him really well. D-hop, right? And yeah. obviously hey, he, he got, got Christian like, Kirk paid. I was say, Kirk was the way he, he got yeah. paid oh and got up out of there because and, of that offense. So. And watching that, and so that's a guy that understands, I, and I think he's shown an ability to understand that, you know? Like, is he a perfect OC? Nobody's he, perfect. But I think, to your point, he's brought in guys that I think fill out his blind spots a little bit. Like Anthony mm -hmm. Lynn with the run game. Not only has he been with Kyle, but he was up with um, Greg Roman. Yeah. One of the kind of most prolific run Run game the ball, yeah. run the ball. So, like, having that background is going to be great for him. Obviously, Bobby Johnson, the offensive line coach, you know, from a schematic standpoint up in New York, like yeah. a lot of what they did. So, I think that those types of quotes, I think, just kind I of – I respect re Bobby Johnson because I've seen him – get four guys off the couch, play against us in week, what was yeah. that, six, yeah. mm -hmm. and beat us. Yeah. I think one of the things, too, right. man, that stands out when you listen to these coaches and how they talk, you know, a lot of people get caught up in egos. Um, I'm, and it's coaches, I'm, I'm saying. And if you watch the game today and you're wondering why so many guys are getting the numbers they're getting, it's because these coaches don't have an ego. Yeah. Have those coaches' schemes like, look, because we've been on – Teams where the coach, this is how we do this things. This is how I run my But then defense. when you watch other teams have success with individuals that you know couldn't walk them out in your shoes, yeah. and you're yeah. like, man, how is But, that's, this but that's, the, that's the reason why me and Fred, especially because we have these conversations all the time about people's journey, you know, yeah. how their situation or circumstance is different. Is, is, it's different from everybody, yeah. you know, different strokes for different folks. So I love hearing that from a coach because that's letting you know his ego's out the door. Mm. I'm trying to win. I'm, yeah. I want these guys or the guys that I pick to be a part of what we do. I want to use them as best of their ability and my ability for us to have as much success as possible to get W's. Yeah, and I think that's another thing that's like incredibly important, you know, with with coaches is remembering that it's a player driven league. Like as yeah. much as I want to be awesome and win with the pen, I got to put my guys in the best position yeah. to be successful. And Kyle does a lot of that. I know you get tired of us saying Kyle does it, but. That offense, he does do it. He, he does it, bro. I, 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 that's just, why I was just so happy Super Bowl Sunday as I, <laughs> as I watch Andy Reid and the team well, Andy, beat no, the Shannon Andy, Andy, Andy Reid does it. So, <laughs> no, Andy, Andy Reid does it too, but we just know Kyle. That I, I understand. Yeah. I had to hear. I had to take Kyle Shanahan to the face 70 times a day when I'm around y'all. Listen, we be in the cafeteria. I be reaching for like grapes and stuff. They be like, you know what? Kyle used to eat these grapes. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, listen. I'm sick of Kyle Shanahan. Right? And you know what? Hey, His buddy. daddy hates me because I called him the Red Lobster. <laughs> oh, my God. So, yeah, pretty excited about that quote. So we got the next one uh, on deck. Oh, man. Yeah, at Texas Tech, um, University of Houston, you know, we had Case Keno and Patrick Mahomes, so we were throwing it a ton, and it was spread offense just like a lot of those are. You get in the NFL, you, you learn the nature of that game and, and the different personnel groups and um, the matchups and, and things like that. And I'm not sure where we were on, on pass percentage my last three years there, but I, I know it wasn't at the top. Um, so we want to be balanced. We want to be able to run the football and, and uh, play action pass and um, really do whatever it takes to win. But the air raid deal is, is – you know, I'm honored to be a part of that because it was Mike Leach, and I have a tremendous amount of respect for him, but uh, I wouldn't categorize anything we do under that name. First of all, wait, wait, wait. Mike Leach, love you to death. Yeah, rest in peace. Yeah. Rest in peace, Mississippi State Bulldog. But I understand what he's saying when he don't want to be known as the air raid. Yeah. I don't, don't, don't call me what I, I did in my past. Because he was not air raid in Arizona. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there were so there were elements of air raid, obviously, like because that's who he is. But I, but I'm I think saying the passing part is, yeah. uh, it was like fifty two to forty nine running, right? So yeah, that's the thing is like when you turn on the film, it's like there's three tight end sets, there's tight ends and a fullback, there's yeah. two backs, there's oh yeah. air raid. Let's talk about air raid. That's a great yeah. question by Jason. So air raid, I think, is this 
as in Mike Leach system. Yeah. It's basically like we're going to create space horizontally with our formation. Yep. So you think about four wide receiver sets, get them out there, one back usually. And we are going to find the best matchup. Because in college, right, the hashes are wider. Yep. So when we get you to the field, that's a lot of grass for a that lot star of grass player to cover. For a corner to cover. And if you don't match it correctly, like so let's say you've got – You've got three guys over two. You've got three guys over two. That means you got a light box. We're going to run the football, yeah. game, right? Oh, and so it basically kind of divides the field, not completely into quadrants, but quadrants based on the numbers. Yeah. Where am I advantageous? And then I coach routes to kind of maximize the space. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like if the corner's playing off, we're running a hitch outside, and we're going to hit that hitch until Every you time. step up. So you bring it then up. Then I'm going to say we're going to run a go, yeah. we're going to run a go. And it's because of the space created by the formation that allows you to do that. Yeah. One of the issues in the NFL Defenses are way, way fast. faster yep. and way better at rushing the passer. Yep. Yep. They're way more consistent at rushing a five-man blocking yep. service. So if you go five on five, which is what that offense wants to do from a protection standpoint, they the NFL – yeah. We'll eat you we'll up. Beat you yeah. up. Yeah. We'll eat you up. Well, he's going to think it too. Let's talk about all the great players that the Air Raid has given us. They, uh, Patrick Mahomes, yep. Wes Wilker, Mike yeah. Crabtree. Uh, yeah, like, Crabtree tore it up. Uh, tore it, like, like, that, that it, it, was it, Baker Mayfield was yeah. in his. Because uh, it creates space. Uh, cre yeah. so, so I think that's the thing. It's, it's cheating in college, if you ask me. It's just cheating offensively in college. Like, but, I mean, most defenses are not suitable to kind of, you know, shut it down. Because you, know, you don't have it. enough coverage. Play. They, they don't, so in college, you don't have enough DBs. And you don't have enough DNs. Yeah. Like, you can't do it. In the NFL, yeah. we got plenty of those guys. Yeah. Yeah. And we're fast. And yeah. so I think the thing is, everyone says air raid's bad. But you look at the Patriots back in, like, when Wes Welker was cooking. Mm -hmm. They were straight stealing third that, down it, pass concepts. Yes, from, from the air, air raid. raid. From yeah. what so, he did already. Yeah. So you see yep. a lot of the principles. Like, you watch Andy Reid. There's a lot of air. I mean, there's West Coast stuff there. Hey, Manny. It was a lot of air raid. A lot of air raid stuff. So everyone thinks it's a bad thing. I think it's a really good yeah. system because it gives you this space and it gives guys <laughs> opportunities in space and can simplify it for the quarterback. So I like that that's a part of his background, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. I think guys hear it or fans hear it because and, and, we, we're talking about mostly the fans who don't. Yeah. Some of these fans are very knowledgeable of the game, but yeah. some of them just they just love the game. Yeah, they they, they love the game. They, they love their team, yeah. and they just want to see the right person or they want to hear the right name. Yeah. Uh, when you hear air raid and you hear you know Kingsbury, you say, "Well, we don't want that. We we tired of. We want to run the ball. We want to yeah. do things." So get it out your head. Yeah. I mean, it's not bad. It's not a bad thing to have yeah. that kind of background because what you want to be in this game, you want to be one of those guys or. Someone that we can't really put our hand on what you're doing Dude, today. Right. You know yes. what I mean? To have a lot of things in your bag that you can always say, hey, you know what? Today, this week, this team, oh, we can kill them with this because yep. they can't stop this. You yeah. know what I mean? So you want to have a lot of different tools you can go into that tool belt adapt. and use. Yeah. And, and, I, and I love it because I feel that it's so many times we get in a box offensively. Mm defensively, mm -hmm. and that's why you lose the game, man, because you're putting the same thing out there. Like, you know, the, the worst thing I hate to hear someone call in on your show after the game and say, man, I saw us run that thing on third and five two weeks ago. Like, you never want to be First of all, that, that was two weeks team. ago. Yeah, yeah. But, but I'm saying, yeah. you don't want to be a team that doesn't have more to pull from. You know yeah. what I mean? You get yeah. in the short red zone, you want to have things that you're pulling from week 10 that they haven't seen yet still. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So I love the simple fact that yeah, you might not necessarily want to see that offensively as a whole. Yeah. But to have it in your back pocket? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's, let's yeah. use it at times. As a DB, when right. I hear air raid, it's from a DB's perspective, it's time for me to tackle. Yeah, I, that's a great point. A, a lot of quick passes, a lot of screens, a lot of if I don't press – I will be attacked. Because yeah. they're like going to attack they, they, the grass. Yeah, yeah they, they're going to attack me. So when I, as a DB here, air raid, all I can think of, I'm going to have to press for 70 plays a game. Yeah. Right? So if you, if you understand what it's doing to the DB's mental, mm -hmm. now you understand why it's effective. Yeah, and I think the other thing is, like, it's usually associated with tempo. Yeah. Right? Tempo regulates Tire you out. structure. Yep. And one reason that works in college is because you have 120 guys. So we can just hockey rotate the receivers in there as yeah. much as we need to. So I think that's part of it. But, uh, again, like, he's not – when you watch 2020, 2021 Arizona, yeah. he's not 
in that a yeah. ton. There yeah. are principles there, yeah. but like you see a lot of multiple tight end sets. We got different types of personnel on the field, not even with the tight ends. We got two backs. We got three running backs. We got yeah. two tight ends and three wide receivers, and we got a big body wide receiver who's kind of like a tight end. Like he knows, and again, in one of the interviews we did, uh, which is going to be on the show tomorrow, he talks about how understanding those those matchups mm -hmm. and, how, and how that personnel creates matchups. So I and, love that. Like, because yeah. for the last couple of years, we just haven't attacked matchups. Yeah. Like, like, Terry has a couple of guys that just don't check him well. Yeah. Like my guy, big play Slay. I talked to Slay. Yeah. Slay don't want no part no, of him. I talked to Slay, and Slay was like, "Man, dude, have you had a receiver that just matches you in the the, the most awkward way?" I like, yes. Mm -hmm. And it's usually a guy that's your same size, mm -hmm. your same speed, and he has something that I say. Slay, he attacks you in your weak spot. He gets to your blind spot better than any yeah. wide receiver that you check. And the fact that he has different, different gears. Yeah, I was going to say, too, you got to think about it, too. Slay is phenomenal. I yeah. love him as a no, he can play. back. Yeah. But he's more, like, out of all the guys that I've, I can say that I can choose from right now today that we talk about, He's a finesser a yeah. little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, he really don't want to put hands on you, yeah. but he does it because He'll of the He'll shatter part. you. He'll shatter you. And mm -hmm. Terry is so physical. Yeah. That he, is he sneak up on you. Yeah. When guys look at Terry, so well-spoken, yeah. so nice, always smiling, and you get in that game, he, he it just bop, 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 and yeah. you be like, well, damn, I didn't think he was bringing that. Yeah. Yeah. So when I watch him go against Slay, I say that all the time, I'm like, well, you don't want to press him. Because that's where you're going to lose right there. And then you don't want to get off him because you don't realize he can run all the routes. Fast, it, yeah. might not look, it might not look like this person or that person, but, but he, he can gets run to it. You know what I'm saying? That's what I love about Terry. He is, he is Martin Luther King off the field and he Malcolm <laughs> X on the field. Like, by any means necessary. I, I, I enjoy that about him. <laughs> no, I, I, that's I, real though. It's like, real. I enjoy players that a switch happens. Because yeah. like, I have seen these players yeah. before. Like, your running mate in college, say, yeah. Reggie Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> Reggie gets in a game and you'll be like, this dude is a, a wrestler. Like, he just turns yeah. mean. Yeah. Yeah. Like, very mean. Then, the fourth quarter bell sound, now he's shaking your hand. Yeah, yeah man, good game. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, F you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you, you just switch faces on me. But I'll tell you, like, you know, but that's what you have to do as a player. Mm -hmm. Offensively, I think. Um, and that's something that I'll be trying to teach my youngest uh, son. I'm, I'm telling him, like, look, man, it's okay to be who you are. Don't do not ever shy away from being who you are, but there's a there's a time and a place to be that other person to yep. tap into. Let that the other person dog. out. Mm -hmm. And I I I think I'm truly him. Like I you know I I sit all the time. I know that I'm nicer than what people might think uh -oh. outside the thing. Tell them what you think, Gemini. Nah, I ain't gonna see. I <laughs> won't even bring Gemini. I won't even bring it up. But that's true though. It's 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 two I sides know. of him. But not yeah. me not me talking about the zodiac part of. It. I'm just yeah. talking about far as I've been in situations where. We friends, mm -hmm. but it's something on the line, man. Screw you for that moment, yeah. and have have it come off to you. You have to take that yeah. because it's something on the line for what we're trying to both accomplish. Com so yeah. that's what I look at in certain players. You got to have that in you, yeah. and if you don't have that in you, you don't make it far along. Yeah, not, not in this league, especially in, on, in, in this profession. Yeah, you know? yeah. We're gonna talk about that later with our you know guys. We're excited to see at the combine, but getting those competitors, you yeah. know, I think is important. And I think you know having a coach in Kingsbury that understands how to maximize to your point what terry does well yeah but also the other thing i want to just bring up real quick is he has the ability to be like i know how to get get the matchup out like you talked about um what's his name christian uh the guy in jacksonville kirk, yeah. kirk. christian kirk man the way he used him the way he got him in off coverage the way he would motion him motion the way he would him. get the press off the way he'd get him in the slot that is a that's high level understanding. Yeah, of like where's my where's where's my dog? Yeah. yeah, how do I maximize him? And I think like you see, he's willing to use different tools yeah. to get there. Right. Yeah. So we might use some air raid principles on this play. Yeah. Or we're going to use some stuff we saw from Kyle Shannon on this play. Yeah. Or we're going to see, hey, we like this concept from Andy Reid, and he's yeah. a guy that you can tell is a student of the game, loves football, and so like when he says that like he's past air raid, like yeah. when you look at the offense in AZ again, there's there's some principles there, but it's it's. It's a, it's an NFL offense. Like you, I see more Kyle Shanahan yeah. or more Andy Reid than mm -hmm. I see Air Raid. Like some yeah. weeks, it depends on the week. Obviously, hey, yeah. this is what I do love too. What, what he's bringing to the table, he got a view of these college players that a lot of pro coaches don't it's have. True. Yeah, and I don't think many people bringing that up. Yeah, like he gonna not only help the offense, he can help us in this year's draft. Yeah. He played against all of these players. He coached this, and he he still. He understands the college approach of offense. Like, because that's what it is. Yeah. Tanner said it earlier. Yeah. It's college on steroids. Yeah. Yeah. Where yeah. this guy understands what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
And uh, just a reminder, we're brought to you by at Bet365. Whoa. Mm-hmm. We're brought to you by Bet365. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. We, we don't. Every sport should be epic. Right now, a new customer can choose between two offers when they open an account at Bet365. Use a QR code to sign up. Deposit 10 and choose between either. First bet safety net offer by placing a bet up to 1000 If your qualifying bet loses, you receive a matched refund in bonus bets. Or bet and get offer and place a bet of $5 or more and get 150 in bonus bets. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365, official sports betting partner of the Washington Commanders. Must be 21 and older and physically located in Virginia. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, remember, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Ooh. I need help. Tana put a little season on that. Remember. Yeah. <laughs> Remember. I told you I need like help. <laughs> I'm gambling. You're going to be on the other end of the call. <laughs> hey, I, I, gam- I gambled on that, uh, the, the NBA All-Star game. Oh, Did you? Uh, That's a weird thing to gamble Over, on. under... 400 points. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I did. And Dame Little went out there and almost hit 50. That's crazy. They're going to have to stop the NFL. They're going to have to stop the NBA All-Star game. I'm sorry. It's not it, 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 yeah. I don't know how to fix it. I think the only way to fix it is to pay them like $5 million a, a player. and No, $5 million to the winning team per person mm-hmm. and 100000 to the losing team. And I think that'll get a game. That'll get some defense being played. I don't know. I think I think it's too far, far, far gone. Far gone? Now, far gone with, with just knowing how much the second half of the season counts for these guys yeah. to make it to the – it's just one of those things, man. Hey, that just have this weekend where people can be loved on who – Accomplished getting there. Find ways to fix the slam dunk contest. Put some more contests. LeBron out there. broke it. Put like, some more contest. Nah, LeBron, LeBron, LeBron broke the. Because he, fl- hey, it's cause it's he a, ain't doing no mean. He broke he it. He broke it because at one point, bro, we was so well, growing far, up. Yeah, I feel Michael like Jordan always the best. Vince Carter, the right. best player showed the up, best. and then LeBron said, "But think about no. how many. Think about how many contests since he's been in the league, which has been twenty plus years. Yeah. that has been great without him. It's just you know of lately, but people it make the other stars say no, and that's what I, yeah, it set a president so. to where some was, guys don't have nothing but that to." Go ahead and hang their hat on. So I don't think he broke it. But I, I feel what you're saying when yeah. it comes to it's it's broken. Yeah. It's somewhere Brooklyn. But I think when you have the three point competition, when you have the skill competition, when you have the rising stars, all that stuff can still be doable. Yeah. Just that that particular game, yeah. that all star game. It's over with. Be done with. First of all, Let's best part of best part of the all star. <laughs> exactly. hey, the best part of the all star was Steph Curry, yeah, and it's, Sabrina yeah. Sinex. Yeah. Oh, that was the I enjoyed that thoroughly. This is something different, though. I yes. think that's why it's like you got to find a way. Like one of the things about the NFL All Star Weekend now is that it's 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 just something new. They're playing yeah. dodgeball. They're being athletes. They're doing obstacle courses. It's just entertaining. It's seeing them in a different way. Yeah. I remember when the NFL they, they, they was they doing dunk contests. Yeah. Do y'all remember that? Yeah. No, that's Did, wild. Yeah. You, you don't remember Chris Carter and him? Yeah, it was Dion, but that was Dion, uh, it yes. wasn't even the NFL. It was uh, uh, Ken Griffey it was, was in it too. It was ESPN oh. yeah. holding the, uh, I guess it was like the best of every sport. profession. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sports uh, and all the top Ken guys. Ken Griffey win me of that thing. Yeah, really? But, but, oh, but yeah. Prime, Prime threw it off the back Backboard, I remember and Chris Carter came to me and yanked it too. To be surprising, Barry Sanders went up there uh-huh. And, and, really? and, and, yeah, yeah. So I mean, guys are athletes. Man. You know, Barry Sanders live in London, right? Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. I, uh, that'd be, but I think that's how you fix it: is you make it more of a game for them, make it something yeah. that they want to do. Because like, if I'm if I'm them in the middle of the season, I don't want to get hurt yeah, in an All Star game. I don't want to mess my legs yeah. up in an All Star game. Like yeah, I want so, to win a championship. Yeah. You find you find something that they, they, that they can do to please the fans, and then let it be what it be. I mean, I just feel like the stuff beforehand is great. Well, well at the end of the day, if if a dude that's not in the NBA keep winning the dunk contest, <laughs> yeah, he's in the NBA. He's now, in man. the G League. <laughs> no, he's, right, on, he's on the team. He's on a roster now. He's, he's in Orlando. He's in man. the G League, and here. he's the two-time the G League champion. Is, is the damn bench player. That's what like I'm telling you. For so, the guy, so. so at, at what point has it got so bad that the person that's winning the dunk contest ain't in the league? I don't know that much nah, about basketball. I don't know league. that much about basketball, but also I wanted to bring just I have a question because you guys watch basketball more than me. Yeah. Is it because the game has changed? Is it because dunking the basketball has become less of a priority? And, and threes, sh- and are, threes more? are now the thing. So Could like, be. it doesn't really like I, well, that skill set is not shooting three. Yeah, like, coming down. Yeah. logo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, maybe we have ran. Like, out I don't of- see people driving to the basket and yeah, like yeah, Zion yeah. Williams yeah. maybe. Yeah. yeah, but like, what's but his? Think about it. If Zion is in the dunk contest, yeah. and but maybe uh, he's like, what's his dexterity on the dunk? Like, you need to be like. 
doing some stuff. Maybe I we just, ran out of dunks to do. Nobody, say, not, nobody want to say that. I was going to say, yeah, that's one of them. But what they need to do, dunk contest wise, to me that would be more exciting. And just by you talking about somebody who's not in the league doing it, go get the guys who are oh the the dunk guys. Go get the dunk guys. Go. It's a lot of guys out there that you and see let, on and let the pro players media. sponsor him. Yeah, or not even like that. that. Yeah, like that's like your team or compete. Yeah. Or, or pick team. Say, okay, we finna have a dunk team. And I'm gonna, gonna go find East. somebody in Brooklyn. Boom, bingo. And, 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 and find a guy now. Now, yeah. now you you because you know everything is driven off of social media now. Yeah. Yeah. Now what you do is got get a guy who probably has no chance of making it any, anywhere near to be highlighted. Yeah. And brings a little more excitement to your game. And that's like you know how what I mean? they entertain. Okay, like, commissioner, that's, that's you better listen up. to this podcast. Yeah, so, you know. But I was just watching something the other day. They have like a like a dunk team. They have like yeah. five five guys that go around. And they do like huge events, and mm -hmm. they're they look. Hype, man. Yeah, they look great. So I know those a guy guys who can there. fly, like literally fly. I forgot his name. Played in a couple of um, All Star games, not All Star games, but celebrity basketball games yeah. that I, I played in. And this dude, I'm talking about just, yeah. I'm talking about he can. Did y'all enjoy watching soar. Michael Parsons bully people around? I didn't even watch that. I, I watched a clip of it because yeah. some of those guys, you'd be like, oh, man, it's awful. He was hogging play. the ball. Michael yeah. Parsons out there running over people. <laughs> CJ Scroud trying to post him up. He dunking all on him. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it was terrible. After he didn't cross Stephen A over and tow his knee up. <laughs> <laughs> so Michael Parsons basically ruined the WNBA, I mean, uh, the NBA All Star weekend oh, single handedly. Oh, so. I'd like to see him cross over Stephen A, though. Well, you know what? Stephen A is one of my favorites, but he getting old. You, right, you and can't be out you there. Know. You got to know, stay in your lane, right? Steven, they was out there coaching, though, but I, I think they were practicing when he did. No, that. no, they he, were doing it the yeah. day before, yeah, and, and, day before, and Michael Parsons sent him to the hospital. I'd love to see it. <laughs> I'd love to see it, man. Oh, well, that's our man. thoughts on You sent me to the hospital like the day after we but played that, basketball. That was just a cardio thing. Yeah. Though. I Dude, I still we gotta play again, man. I just I was oh I'm I don't in bad condition right now. I know that's what I'm saying. But yeah. get it going. We can play so again. So he said he said that going into the first one. No, I already knew I was in bad. <laughs> you know condition. I ain't trying to hit nothing. He said, man, he everything he said. I showed up <laughs> laying on the ground before the game started. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. It was a uh, it was an eye opening experience for me, Fred. Yeah, just shows you you know. Fatigue makes cowards you, you on assault. You're most definitely a basketball bully. Like you have no <laughs> game to you, but your strength I don't. And, and your body. <laughs> Hard to compete with. Sometimes when you're just a big guy, like, stuff yourself up. You know <laughs> use what, what you got, man. <laughs> yeah, use what you got. So that's our thoughts on the NBA and the All-Star Weekend. But we also have another coordinator Yeah, we got in, right? And he said some stuff at the press conference, right, Jason? Well, every day, you know, when we go out there on the field, um, the standard is the standard. Okay, now, I know that's thrown around a lot. But um, part of our coaches and the reason that we got the coaches that we got uh, was because they are um, they hold people accountable. All right, they're great teachers first, all right? But if you don't do it the right way, you're going to get called out on it. That is our job to make sure that we teach them in many different facets, in many different ways so that that guy can get it. All right, that's our job. That's what they pay us to what they pay us. They don't pay us all this money just to, to go in there and, and put it up on the board and if certain guys can't get it. No, it's your job to make sure they can get it. And if a coach um, sits there and says he can't learn, he probably can't coach. Okay, so um, we'll, we'll get these guys to understand what we want them to do and do it in a, 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 a very good manner. Ooh. It like just gives me. It, it yeah. gives me the chills. Yeah, I just want to. Because he's right. I yeah. have always said it ain't no such thing as bad kids. It's bad parents. Mm -hmm. I, at the end of the day, he's letting you know if a player make it to this level, he can play. You can't coach. Mm -hmm. I love that because most coaches would never say that. that yeah. Most coaches would never say that knowing that's the truth. A lot of coaches stink. Yeah. A lot of coaches ruin careers. A lot of coaches, bad parents. Yeah. I think, too, when you look at some of the things that you see that transpire throughout the league as a whole uh, with different teams and different schemes, Half of the time, it's not being coached well yeah. or coached like it used to be. You they don't, they don't have a strong vision of it. Yeah, and and what what you see a lot of, uh, you get guys that just, um, I guess you say uber talented, and they are the top elite. And so coaches get a lot of recognition or I guess you can say praise for that guy just being who, who, who he is. Yeah. But as a whole, the team has fell Stink. off because you didn't tell yeah. everybody where to be, how to be, you know what I mean? Like, I, I have a coach in um, in college. To this day, I give him all the credit for everything I learned as the wide receiver. Like, I came in, thought I knew something about being a receiver, left out, I had a Ph.D. in it. Like, I literally went through the NFL right. with 
coaches that didn't have to. The thing that they was telling me, I had learned already. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like you want to be told again, but I, I knew what I, I knew. I knew it because I came in here ready. So when I hear him talk like that, it's great because yeah. I, I said him. We sit in the same seat. We all sit in the same seat watching his team, especially from a defense standpoint. And you just like someone can't be telling him right way to do that. Like right. I'm a receiver. Yeah. I felt yeah. that whole I, year by Phil Forbes. Yeah, I like I, that. I know, not protecting him. I know when I see something yeah. wrong, and I know when the number states that is wrong because of how drastic that drop off is when it comes to production from a year ago. Like if you can't tell me you could be in the top three in two or two out of three years in the next year, you're just gonna drop out of the damn atmosphere. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's not even so, exist. Yeah. So that's a lot to do with coaching. And yeah. so when I hear a guy speaks like that with that much and you know we had a chance to sit down here and talk to him and like I said, I was excited. I was I was beyond excited. The hair stood up on my neck because even it's just words from him He's coming from a place where I've seen them play that way. Yeah. So I know it. he means it. And yeah. we have too many talented guys here that I feel like fits what he's going to bring. Like he's going to be able to, he's going to be able to get it out of him. So I'm 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 ecstatic. I'm looking forward to seeing these guys. And I'm looking forward not more so on the field of play like, you know, game time and practice. Yeah. I think the tempo and the way they practice is going to show, yeah. you know, who they're going to be as a team. And that interview that you guys did with him was awesome. And that yeah. comes out on the command center show, which is tomorrow. Like it was mm -hmm. one of the best interviews I've seen. And he, and you're right. Like he's infectious. And yeah. like, there's something about coaching, man. Like it's really hard to articulate. Like yeah. I could be on the board and give you everything you need. But if you don't, if I can't inspire you yeah. and motivate you mm -hmm. and have a clear, like you, like give you that juice. And yeah. he came in and right away, the energy was there, like, yeah, right? Like, and, and like this quote to me, mm -hmm. it gets me juiced. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like just the way he's talking, I can hear him saying it in the presser and I'm yeah. just like, I, that energy, that passion, that motivation, that coaching, that identity is going to be huge for this group. I think that all coaches learn from everything and I think he learned from Mississippi State beating Auburn so bad when I was in <laughs> Shut up, man. You know, I can say that about our I love, I love how the first I thing... I beat the, the coordinator It was like the death. first thing he said <laughs> when he came in is like, oh yeah, Auburn, I don't know if I can talk to you. I was like, come on, man. You haven't met this guy for like five seconds. I, I already knew him because <laughs> I looked at him on the, on the sideline, him and Marcus Washington over there on the other sideline as we beat them by 40. <laughs> Hey man, but no, honestly, too man, you gotta think about it, um, Fred. No, like, just Fred, just man. no I mean, chill. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I, I appreciate Fred for being Fred because he broke the ice. He did break in the that ice. interview. That interview, the ice was broken, and you knew what you was gonna get because Fred got the man laddered up talking about Mississippi State and Auburn <laughs> matchups, and then before you know, it, we was talking, and it yeah. was just like, damn, you know, we was sitting here as bros. Yeah. But I think too, what you got out of that man, what I what I took from it is just knowing that. Um, like, he wasn't – so, you know, because I, I asked the question about, like, you know, I've been watching your track record. I, I, I've yeah. seen some of the things you, you've done throughout the years where you've been, and it, it follows. Yeah. Everywhere you've been, the, the defensive pick, play, pick, pick, especially picks, the secondary, has been similar. Yeah. You know, how do you get we, us to do that? And he was like, you know, it's not so about finding the right guys, just – Knowing who I can give those nuggets to. Like, I'm going to give you nuggets, yeah. and I'm going to be able to feature some certain guys. And yeah. the way I'm going to do it about it is you have to earn it. Yeah. But this is how we're going to play this game. And then you talked about it like, you know, hey, uh, and it's crazy. I don't want to give too much of this because yeah, you're going to be able to see it tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just kind of, you know, I'm just kind of giving you little snippets of it. But when you talked about, you know, you brought up the interception thing. He's like, well, most interceptions come from bad passes. Yeah. I'm going to leave it right there because it's a, it's a great interview, so yeah. just watch it. But I just love his responses, man. It's yeah. like everything he was ready for, that because he's seen it, he's, he's able to done it, he, he's done it, and yeah. then those players speaks for him. Well, also, like, the next quote he gave in that presser was, like, right in line with what you guys are talking about. And you'll hear me talk about this all the time. The ball is life. All right? And so we, it's like air, and we got to have it. We got to get it. I so, need it. Yeah. The best coordinators I've ever had, they focus on, dude, that ball that is ball money. Yeah, get that, yeah. ball. I, that ball, and when he say that ball is life, yeah. that ball, I remember holding it in my hand when I was like seven, eight, nine years old. That ball gave me a life. Mm -hmm. It gave me a life in D.C., yeah. It gave me a life for my kids. Yeah. It has molded my life. Yeah. It has taken me to Japan. Yeah. It has taken me across the world. That ball is life resonated with me mm -hmm. because I remember being that child and not knowing what what trip this ball is about to take me mm -hmm. on yeah. in life. So it's when he said that, it resonated way more than me than just football. And not to get off topic with what he was saying, but you know, I can allude a little bit to what you're talking about. 
it's I preach this to my to my sons and all the time, especially when it comes to football. You know, hey, take care of the game because the game will take care yeah, of you. Know. You yeah. see what I'm saying? And so, and that's with anything you do, not just yeah. football, but anything. And if it's your profession. That's how I kind of live. I, I I think back now, man. I get a chance to you know go walk down memory lane or whatever you want to say when it comes to what I've done. And I remember my last few years here, and Mike Shanahan used to meet me on the field before everybody else was out there. And I guess he saw me all the time, like this damn dude out here before everybody. You know, and you know what my routine was. Yeah. I used to get out there before everybody. I used to do my little ladder work, go under the uh, mm-hmm. ladders or go over the uh, hurdles, hurdles they have out mm-hmm. there. And Mike would be like, man, you know, I know this since I've been here, 2010, you be the first one of the, one of the first guys out here. And I say, cause I got a routine and I feel like if I don't do it, don't get me through practice. Yeah. And we had conversations, man. And it's just, I reflect on those now because that's where a lot of players, you know, I guess coaches get to know who they got. Yeah. Who can, who, who they willing to go who to they, war who with. Who they can depend on. And the reason why I'm bringing this story up because when you have a coach like Joe Witt and, and some of the things that we've seen and how he said you have to earn it, and, you know, I'm going to shoot these nuggets. It just brought me, I smiled because I'm sitting here like, man, the good coaches I coach with, Joe Gibbs, mm. even my coach in high school, Coach Frazier, college, Bush Davis and Curtis Johnson, you know, it was nuggets always dropped. It was always yeah. something dropped in the meeting or before a game. It was something that they gave me, even if it wasn't about the game, it was about life yeah. that I was able to use, whether it was on the field or through my walk. Yeah. And half of the things I do to this day, is something that I was taught from my high school coach, my head coach. And so I look at that when he said yeah. ball this life, I'm like, boy, he ain't lying. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's how you receive the knowledge yeah. and how you able to use it when you might be faced with, you know. You made me just want to give a shout out to my high school coach. Willie Collins, thank <laughs> you, brother. Thank you. Because my high school coach, the one thing he majored in was molding knuckleheads. <laughs> like, that, that's what he, he you, made I mean, in. You like, were, I was, you was MVP like, knucklehead on his, t- <laughs> his team, too. Thank huh? you, Willie. Were you crazy in high school like that? No, I was. Listen, I remember my, me and my, when me and my, first, my head coach met for the first time, right? Yeah. I was a basketball player. Yeah. I came out for football ninth grade. I was like 5'7", 100 pounds even. Mm-hmm. He was like, what position you want to play? I like, I'm going to play a wide receiver in Kona. He like, you sure? I'm like, yeah, man. I'm the best player you got. He like, what you talking about? He like, you probably won't make the team. I like, that's fine. We'll see. Years go by. I get to like my 10th grade year. I'm not playing years much. Go by. Yeah, yeah. Two years. <laughs> Two years. So I get there. I'm starting to play a little bit, not playing much. We go to the state championship. I start wide receiver, get hurt. And you're in. And cornerback. I'm like, coach, it's my time. He like, nah, it ain't. <laughs> so I sat there while we played in the state championship. I played on special teams, stuff like that. Yeah. I cried when we lost that game. Because you knew. And I cussed my coach out. I said, you know what? We lost this game because you didn't put me Dude, in. You're such a, I bet you were like a no, nightmare. Uh, you no, know, I told him, if you put me in this game, this would have been my coming out party. But you didn't. I'll see you next season. Well, Kyle, I love next the season, I came friend. back. I'm six feet tall. Yeah. I, I, I still skinny. I was going to say, you ain't gaining no weight. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but boy, was I lighting it up. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. But I, yeah, so yeah, high school coaches are awesome in terms yeah, of impact. Ben, Mac, ben McEnroe, thank you very much. The, yeah. uh, the thing I want to say about this, you know, we're talking about players you want. Ball, football needs to be important, right? Yeah. So this has a double meaning, a double entendre, if you will, in yeah. my opinion. Ball is life. I want guys that football is important to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They care about football. They're in the building. They study. They want to get better. There's a hunger to improve, right? Mm-hmm. It's important to them. Like Kyle used to say this to me, and I remember, I've got to bring him up, man, because it's, <laughs> it's impactful. This is in if San I Francisco. Hear Kyle, man, I'm having nightmares about this the is, name This is in Kyle. San Francisco. He said, I judge the quality of a human being on how they approach the game of football. Yeah. And that's like a... That's like a crazy thing to say, yeah. but it also shows you like what you're looking for as a coach because you want someone that you can bet on and count on. The other thing I think this shows is it shows a willingness and a desire to force turnovers in the secondary, mm-hmm. right? We got to have it. We got to get it. Without it's, it, we're not good. Yeah, no. we, it is life. It's our lifeline in terms yeah. of defensive football. And Fred, what's that statistic in Green Bay? He led the NFL in like, with like 176. 156 interceptions. That's ridiculous. Yeah. And I, so everywhere he's been, yeah, the ball, ball, like, obviously the football is important to him. He's a guy that's built his life around it, mm-hmm. but they have found a way to get that ball out. And <laughs> Tana, in that interview, he talks about the things he's looking to get those guys in terms yeah. of edges. So it's not, 
it's his, he's bringing a scheme and a philosophy yeah. you know, that's helping that happen, which I think is, again, uh, a nice encapsulation. And then another on. thing, too, and I want to cut you up before you start. You got to get in before he, yeah, Brett you starts you got to get in before him. He didn't really <laughs> just take the credit for none of that stuff yeah, either. Yeah. He, he talked did. about, he said, well, I, he, Quinn, you know, yeah. what or what we, we've we done. Yeah. So he, did, he was good about that. You stuff. love that about a yeah. guy. I mean, he's not sitting here ready to say, pat me on the I'm back, or let no. me beat my chest. He's like, hey, what we've done, and, and, and while we've did, able to have been successful, since I've been to Atlanta with Quinn, and yeah. that's he he kept reiterating that, since yeah. I've been to Atlanta, man, it, things just, just changed yeah. and if you in my career. And Green Bay, you remember guys like Al Harris, yeah. the play he made in the playoff at the Hasselbeck talking about, uh, we going to take the ball <laughs> and we, we going to win. win. Yeah. No, you ain't. Yeah. You're going to take the ball and you're going to lose. Yeah. I, I, I just, and watching Charles Woodson Hall of Fame campaign, all yeah. the plays he made, watching them Green Bay, Nick Collins, yeah, Nick shot Collins, with all these oh dudes, God. man. It was like dude after dude after that's dude. True. Nick yeah. Collins don't get enough praise, but Nick, he was. If he wouldn't have got injured, bro, he if he was, wouldn't have got injured. That boy would come off that safety position and be scooting, you hear me? Yeah, yeah. 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 And then, yeah. I mean, he just was full of awesome quotes. Here's yeah. another one for you. Um, the way that we live is not for everybody, okay? It's not, all right? Because we're going to run and put our bodies on people in a violent manner, all right? And so we're going to get that play style right first. Um, Sean Taylor is my favorite player, all right? So um, it means a lot to to be able to be a part of what we're about to do and bring a high-level brand of defense. So before we go on with that, when he said it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. Thank you, Lord. Not yeah. for everybody. Because I'm tired of seeing players here that just here because we got them on the team. Yes. If you don't fit what we're doing, and trust me, he's not saying that I can't coach it and try to make you he, be that he guy. Talks about how he's I'm just going to make sure that I do my part for you to be able to do your part exceptionally, yeah. I mean, very well. And if you don't, then, baby, I, here's the door. All right, we ain't going to hold you. You know what I mean? When you I hear it ain't for everybody, the first thing come to my mind, because for years we've been – I want high character guys. Fred, that's not what he's talking about. Listen, when I hear that, <laughs> violent people do violent things. Uh, he said, I don't need ch the church choir, like yes. the Mississippi Mass Choir. Yes. I want a couple of violent dudes in here. When they show up on Sunday, they here to swap paint. Yeah. Like, they are here to do things that most people don't want to do. Most people do not want to lay their helmet on a 240-pound back time after time after time again. He telling you, when I show up with my guys, somebody going to get hurt. It, it was, I, he ain't scared to say it. It was almost like Joe Gibbs when you tell him, you got to have that burr. You got yeah. to hit him right here. You got you to you want it. And, yeah. remember, and, and, and then also, too, to credit to what he's talking about, what he's saying is, you know, look, and what Fred is trying to allude to a little bit, I guess you can say, we heard, I want – you know, these guys to kind of, you know, I want the guys that I'm looking for. I'm, yeah. I'm going to put a nose word. I don't want to yeah. say what, yeah. you know, what I think was trying to be said. Church choir. But then I've heard of other coach who didn't curse, who's very religious, yeah. Yeah. who's dealt with so many losses in his family and yeah. always leaned to Christ and said, yeah. man, hey, you know, that's, that's what's, you know, I have to deal with. That's the way the cookie crumbled. But tells you that I don't want all my players to be the same. Yeah. No. I understand that certain of them have to be like, you, know, you know, be the guy that going to go out, you know, Every every week, every night of the week, and yeah. then come here Sunday. Or it's a guy that's like Clinton Porter that's not going to practice and going to go out there and steal a rush for uh, one. You got a James Thrash. Or a guy to James Thrash that might be holy as all outdoors. But and the still gonna, start. And still going to go out there and, and tattoo you and tell yeah. you something about yourself. But that's what I've learned from great coaches. They understand how to coach them all. I understand that this is way, how he performs and how he do things. But come Sunday – or come practice when we get between these lines. As yeah. long as you're doing what I want you to do, That's all we can is. win. You know what I mean? So, so I love hearing that about violent people. You know what I mean? Doing the violent things because that's what you need in this game. You it's can't a violent be, sport. You can't be soft yeah. or or have a guy that you got to pacify and think you're going to get him to reach his max. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's just like kind of the quality of guy you want in here. But also to me, it, it speaks to a standard of physicality. Yep. You know, he said the standard is the standard. Yep. It's like, you know, hey, man, if you don't want to tackle, like. This ain't the place. We're not going to do it. And so the thing that I love about this whole thing, right, mm -hmm. is that Sean Taylor is my favorite player. And the first day I was in the building here as a rookie, Danny Smith yes. said, this is the standard for what we do here as Washington Redskins at the time. Yeah. Put up a clip of Sean Taylor 
almost blocking a punt, decapitating two people on special teams. Like, I'm not kidding. Like yeah. old, oh, no, old I was school, here with him. old yeah. school, like yeah. murder fest, like yeah. helmet off. Like, and you're like, and he's like, this is how we play special teams. This is how we play football as a Redskin. Yeah. And so to me, it's not that you don't need like mean people. Mm -hmm. You need dudes who put the helmet on and become somebody who are willing yeah. to do what it takes to get the job done. And so I think about like Reed Dowdy. Yeah. Like Reed Dowdy yeah. was the nicest dude you've ever met. Oh, but but I could run, count on Reed run through you, boy. to yes. tackle Brandon Jacobs. Every time. And Reed weighed 190 pounds and he was going to throw it in there. He was going to sacrifice every part if of his that. body. I have watched him pull out body parts <laughs> doing games. Man. But that, Here, man, take that arm and put, take have, it to the side. <laughs> with you. Like this dude... Look. Relentless. I have been thrown in the game on a punt return, and Reed Dowdy was the first person to go. I he hit the dude so hard, I was going to look, and I'm like, oh shit, I gotta keep running. <laughs> but he was, but like, no sacrifice. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like he's a like Fletch dude. Like Fletch also yeah. was a great leader, but when he put the helmet on, oh, it was different. He was Turned a the different dark dude, and so yeah. Yeah. he was. You, you know, he's going to tackle. Yeah. You yeah. know, he's going to do the hard yeah. stuff. Like another guy, Dante Stallworth, when he was yeah. here, yeah. And, and Mike Shanahan said, "Go crack that safety." Yeah. yeah. He, he, like a, like a he was going to murder that city. Yeah. He was one of, here in yeah. DC. Yeah, but I, all yeah. I'm saying is like it doesn't need to be. It could be the church choir, but on yeah. the field, like I want a Sean Taylor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, and yeah. I think that that speaks to what he likes about the game, mm -hmm. the the physical violence, mm -hmm. and then the the standard yeah. is the standard. Which and I and how can we obtain that, or how can we be that team on the field on Sunday? what we need to do throughout the week to be that team. Yeah. And, I, and that first thing that I thought about, practice is going to be different. Yeah. The, yeah. the practice is going to be different. Gonna be different yeah. Practice is going to be different. And, and, you know, for for years we've been, I know me and B. Mitch have talked, you know, in endless times about just, man, you can't expect to come Sunday and say, okay, I'm going to flip this switch and make a tackle. Yeah. You have to be able to hit a, a couple of days in practice and see it in practice for, and just, I was one of those players. Like, I was a guy... And don't get me wrong, I've been I've been on the other side of it where I couldn't do anything and I had to go play for the team and still went up and put yeah. up big numbers. But I was a guy that I didn't want to not miss a practice. Yeah. And people yeah. might think it was just because I just wanted to be a – no, I felt like if I'm playing Sunday, I need to be out there and get all these reps now yeah. so it could come to me like second nature on the field Sunday. Like they look at us as professionals and say, well, you can go out there. And there's a lot of guys, they're Red Breeze. They can really go out there and say, I'm going to BS throughout the week and come Sunday, I'm going to go out there and put on my best, my best game. Yeah. Me, I didn't see myself that way. I wanted to be – like that guy that studied for that test all week. So come yeah, Friday, when that test go. come, I'm prepared. So just to get to what I'm trying to say is I when I was listening to that, him talking about being violent, you can't do that just on Sundays. Yeah. It, it starts in the practice field. It starts in the meeting room. So he's going to show these guys how we have to be. This is the standard we're going to uphold. And the only way we're going to do that, that's why he says, if it's not for you, here's the dough. Because right. he knows in order for us to be that team, we got to practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think the other thing, too, there is just like when you have a violent physical defense, you get a violent physical offense. Mm. They're used to going against that every day. Yeah, so that's why it's so important that you have – that edge, right? Iron shot. There's a reason. Iron. There's a reason Baltimore is always tough. There's yeah. a reason Detroit's tough. Yeah, it's because they're they're getting after each other. Sometimes right? it's good to wake up and choose violence. Yeah. It is. That's especially on the football field. Yeah. All right. Dangerous. We are doing a combine <laughs> preview now. The combine preview segment is presented by Northwest Federal Credit Union, the official credit union of the Washington Commanders. Stop searching. Go Northwest. Check out nwfcu.org slash Washington to see how easy it is to join and how Northwest can help make your money work for you. Stop by a branch or visit nwfcu.org slash Washington today. You're getting very good at that, Chuck Willery. Thank you. I've I messed up the first two, so yeah, don't worry about it. I got third, your back. Third bro. time's the charm. Yep. Third time's the charm. All right. So NFL Combine is coming up. Mm -hmm. Everyone's excited to see people run the forties and yeah. do all different stuff. But I think the most important part of this process is the interviews. Interviews. And both of you guys went to the combine. Yeah. I did not go because congratulations. There's obvious reasons why. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you guys have a funny combine story? Funny combine interview story that you're like, man, that was really weird. They asked me that question, or something. You're like, oh. Uh, I had a weird interview with the Commanders or Redskins at the time, like anything like that? Um, no, I mean, I, I think the only thing that stood out to me throughout my whole interviewing process, it's strange because I think the world of this coach now, uh, Butch Davis, mm -hmm. he was leaving at the same time I was leaving. He had just got the job to Cleveland Browns. Mm. And I was like, I would be able to, I would sit in here and be talking to my own. He knows me better than anybody <laughs> yeah. knows me. 
But I think the whole interview was for the other guys to get to know me. That's and, interesting. <laughs> and not to sh- not not sure of where they was picking at the time. I had no clue of none of that stuff. Yeah. I didn't even care about that stuff at that time. I was just happy that I was going to be a guy that came in. Drafted. I yeah. barely came into college, and I'm leaving now as one of the top, top guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but I remember when I got to the back to talk to Reggie about his experience with that same interview. He was like, "Hey, man, uh, how does it go with you and Butch?" And I was like, um, "It went fine." <laughs> and he was like. Man, I, you know, they asked us about who was the coach that it wasn't him asking the question. It was someone else. And yeah. it was almost like they was trying to lay us up to say, yeah, see, to shine a light on Coach Butch. Davis. Yeah. Now, I think, like I said, I think the world of Coach Davis, he's a guy I still reach out to to this day. Mm-hmm. He's one of the coaches that I would text on his birthday, text on Christmas, holidays. You know, I try to do that to all the coaches that I still have their connects. Some coaches are so old, they're like my dad. They don't text back. So <laughs> I just I just stopped texting them. But um. At the time, at the moment, me and Reggie's, our comment, our coach name that we used was the same. And we both said CJ. He was the most inspirational coach that we had. Was he your receiver coach? He was the receiver coach. Yeah. And you got to think, we with, yeah, him, guy. we with him more than anybody. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? You don't get me wrong. I thought yeah. the world of Coach Davis. I think I learned a lot, you know, at, uh, at school with Coach Davis. Draft, y'all. You know what I mean? <laughs> and to be honest with you, when we said that name, the whole – Thing happened. The, the same thing happened already happened to me. We just rushed out of there. <laughs> really? It wasn't like no beef. It Kicked was just. Him out. It wasn't what we wanted to hear. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we asked D. Lou because there was a lot of us at the uh, yeah. combine. So, I mean, we, so we asked Dan Morgan and D. Lou, yeah. and they said, "Oh, Coach Davis." And he was like, "Oh yeah." Uh-huh. But we didn't know. Yeah. You know, we didn't know. But That's interesting. To this day, I look back at it and. um it was just one of those. That was the only thing I can really talk about, as far as interview wise, because yeah. all the interviews was kind of short. You know what I mean? Yeah. I went in there, shook hands. They say what they had to say to me, and I was out of there. And then yeah. you know, too, I wasn't, I wasn't going to work out there. So when you uh, tell those guys yeah. that, they're kind of bitter about that in a sense, like, oh, you know, we all here today. Yeah. So if you don't work out, we're going to miss you. And being that I'm from Miami, even though I'm not a cocky guy, yeah. I was like, well, you're going to miss the show. You don't come to Miami. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I had to say it. I'm, I, I'm a big 49er fan, fan yeah. growing up. Yeah. And I remember the 49ers guy was the guy who gave me my whole rundown when I had to get weighed. It was a guy. He was in the 49er, you know, thing. So I'm looking at his shirt the whole time like, that's my team. Like, you know, yeah. was praying like, oh, I hope 49ers. And he treated me like. You know what? Yeah. The entire time because I wasn't working out that day. Uh, yeah. So he was like doing that. Um, <laughs> you scared? Because that's what they try to say. You scared? <laughs> so he like. Yeah. So I guess you're not working out, right? You're a Miami guy. I guess you're not. And you know, other positions have went before the receivers. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I'm not working. Well, you're gonna miss out because I, I don't think I'm gonna see you then. I'm like, well, you are gonna miss out. You are gonna miss out because yeah. the show gonna be in Miami yeah. Yeah. at Green Tree. So that's, that's changed a little bit yeah. now. Like guys are less, you know. No, like, they know now. Yeah. It's, but I think we set the tone back then. Yeah, with yeah, that. We so. wasn't. It yeah. was a lot of teams doing that, yeah. working out. They're doing that pro day at yeah. school. Yeah. But one of the things about Miami, we was very confident yeah. in that we can go out there. And they actually do anything on the board. Oh uh, no! Yeah, oh, you know what they did? Talk, I no, I think work. one guy. You know what? But I don't think that was at the combine. I think I had to write a coverage or some. I knew the basic stuff. You yeah. know, we knew two man, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, all yeah. that stuff. But yeah. we didn't have to do much. They'll tell you to draw up the. Okay, so one receiver coach asked me. Um, he said a play. He gave me a play, and that's the thing I said. Coach CJ had us right. We was ready. We was ready for the pros. Yeah. Huh. Day one, he gave us a play. And he was like, all right, show me which receiver we starting with. And he kind of like went over it, like, we're going to start with the X. Yeah. So draw me the formation and then show me what, what each of those guys' route is. So it was like uh, 747. And yeah. he was starting with the X. Okay, the X is over here. He got trips right. Okay, we got the Z. I you still remember we the got, play. We yeah. got the Z. You know what I'm saying? We got yeah. the Z over here with the tight end. And we, it's trips. You know yeah. what I mean? So we got the other guy over. And he's 747. It's some outside number. Boom, boom, boom. He's like, okay. And that's about as far as I remember. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. But it was nothing hard. That's the that's the thing. Is I do a lot of combine consulting for yeah. the guys. And I'm like, they just want to see that you like are a student. Yeah, you, you know, know I would say plays. they want to know that you love the yeah. game. Because yeah. I think be a coward. I got really close with him at the senior bowl. Mm. So when we made it to the combine, it was like he just kept his eye on me the whole yeah. time. And he asked me one day, because he, he was the one that came and got me from – my practices with the That's South. That's a great story, by the and way. Take, and took me over to them. And he set me down in there when I went in there to, to, to talk to Pittsburgh. And he was like, Fred Smooth, are you crazy? <laughs> I'm like, what? 
I'm like, yeah, I am crazy <sighs> about football. And he's like, I know it. You know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah, yeah, you, you, you yeah, right, yeah, like yeah. you're right when they say they want to do it. And I can remember taking the Wonderlink test. Yeah. yeah. They thought I cheated on the Wonderlink test. Really? Wonderlink. Because I, yeah. I, I scored like <laughs> the Wonderlink. Whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Wonderlick. Wonderlick? Yeah. Huh? Guess I what? Just, I was there Fred talk. I ain't, <laughs> I, I, I ain't want to chime I scold, in. No, I like, scold like one of the highest out of our class. But you're, really. you're very smart. Fred. Yeah, yeah. I, I would get it. smart. And, and they smart. were shocked about that. And I can remember, I remember I told y'all we was taking these written tests. Mm -hmm. And I remember taking the Giants test. Like, what was like? What kind of questions on the written test? Is it like the same as the Wonderlick? Because the Wonderlick the, is like a scan yeah, yeah, like a bubble, yeah. but, right? But the personal test, I thought the one, let's just say, for instance, the New York Giant test, mm -hmm. it was more about life. Mm, skill things and I think they they trying to ask you questions I'm, to see can you handle the city of New York I'm mm. glad you brought that up because I talked to some of my guys pre and post and like every every team has a different way that they want to like they want to see if you love football yeah mm. so they'll ask like some weird question like you remember that a couple years ago it was like let's play like door basketball yeah and everyone's like why are we doing that because they want to see how you compete or whatever yeah, yeah yeah and so everyone's got their test they got their psychologist there all that stuff and so i always think it's interesting like that what they feel like they got to give you yeah it's like some's a written test some's auditory some's like a bunch of pictures you know because they're trying yeah. to evaluate yeah. they're trying to look for the magic bullet to say yeah. this guy's got the mentality we're looking for did y'all did y'all do any small testing because they did get me in a room and with the beanbag test? Did y'all have to do the beanbag test? Were they, they throwing it, it over your shoulder? Now they do it so on we a did that on We did that on the, the actual pro day because I actually. Oh, did you? Yeah. So I had to do a lot of that stuff on pro day, like where they were throwing stuff on my hand and you had to. Yeah. And he will call like, what shoulder? And you'd be right like, Right shoulder, okay. yeah. And yeah. Left. And, yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So it was just things like that. But I think, too, and I know we're talking about the combine. Yeah. Um, I found it more interesting on visits. With the teams. With teams. Yeah. Like after the combine, you yeah. go, now you're home and yeah. you're back in school. Cause we were still in school trying yeah, to graduate. Yeah, we were in school. And I remember, you know, I remember I was getting ready to go to Kansas City and I had to take my last exam. And they was like, well, I was like, well, I told Kansas City, like, look, man, I'm finna graduate. So let me take this exam. And they was like, you graduate? They were like, on time? Like, four years? <laughs> they was like, man, no, do that. And we'll take, we'll bring you with the next group. Yeah. And then it's crazy. I missed that window. And then the next group I came with was like Chad Johnson. Uh, Marvin Menace, because he ended up going. He, he ended yep. up being drafted. He ended up going there. Yeah. Uh, it was another guy. He was a receiver in our class. He played at somewhere in Texas. He wore eighty nine for them. I forgot his name. I'm gonna thank him. He came out in our class. He wore number eighty nine in in Kansas City. He was there with Marvin. He got. I think he was like, like a later round, third round yeah, draft yeah, pick yeah. or something. But I remember us being on that visit in Kansas City, and I remember just all us in the Chad, me, Marvin. Uh, I think um, Vic was there too with yeah. us. A lot of us. We was all there and. You know what the fun part about that is being that you just it's your first time. This is my first experience. Like yeah. I didn't I didn't go on a, a a college visit. Yeah, yeah. At Miami. I went on some. I went mm. on, you know, two of them, but I didn't go on an around elite guys. Yes. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. now you look at yourself as one of these elite players mm. that's gonna be like, you know, a high or a top draft pick. And guys are wanting to see their self. They want to strut their stuff. And then you got me. I'm in there like. Shit, I'm from Miami. And they was giving me like hiking like we don't won a national championship or yeah, something. Yeah. And so guy like, man, put on Tanner tape. I want to see Tanner tape. And the dude was like, man, I ain't gonna put Tanner tape. I'm gonna put Tanner tape on for last. Yeah. So I was in there like, why you wouldn't put my tape on? Oh, y'all watch tape, y'all swim together. We, yeah, so we, oh. we was all watching film. Yeah. And so the guy, it was a I don't know his name, but we became cool, man, when we we all got drafted. But he gave me a uh, um uh, a nod. That day watching film, cause he looked at me as he always saw me just fast, you know yeah. what I mean. So he thought that when I'm watching this guy on film, or when I'm watching his highlights, I yeah. ain't seeing him catching the ball. I just see him with the ball in his hand, blah blah yeah. blah. So he's just a fast guy. So after he watched my tape, they were showing highlights, they were showing practice film, just everything one on ones. And he was like, "Oh, I ain't know he was a hands catcher. Yeah, mm. I thought he just quit with his body. I thought we just had to give him the ball. And so I'm looking at, I'm like, I don't know if they take that as an insult yeah. or like, but I'm glad to have, you know, showed you yeah. more than I could tell you. And when we got out of that thing, Chad was funny. He was like, boy, you used to take that thing up down there to you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, I love Chad. Chad was just yeah. funny, but yeah. it was just good interacting with those guys. Yeah. And it's yeah. crazy, that particular guy, he was like our black here. Mm. And his last name was Winston. And I ended up being drafted by the Jets, who his brother was actually uh, the same guy there, yeah. uh, Kevin Winston. So yeah. I ended up going to the Jets where his brother was at. And I remember Kevin Winston used to always call me Mookie. 
I, I wonder if Kevin's still around. He always called me Mookie because uh-huh. he's like, boy, you just because I was in Miami and I was a little rough around the edges. Yeah, yeah. I was, well, I tell you, my my vocabulary wasn't that large <laughs> then, it still ain't now. But <laughs> everything came out of my mouth was yeah. how, how Jason had to bleep it. You know, they yeah. they was doing a lot of that over there. But you know, just to get back to it, man, that experience like no other. You know, I I, I think any guy who's you know, you just said that you didn't get a chance to go to the combine. Man, I I cherish those moments because that was my first time being open. With did like, you feel uncomfortable at the combine? Because a little bit when we had to do the, the walk on the stage yeah. in the tights. No, I was uncomfortable then. Yeah, I was uncomfortable yeah, I then. Was, that was like a meat market. Yeah, it was like a, and I I never forget it. Is I remember who was in front of me. Mm-hmm. DBs, yeah. Adrian Wilson. Yeah. Remember Adrian? <laughs> they make us walk on the stage, and I remember Adrian walking on the stage, just ripped, chiseled. I'm talking about shirt off, mm-hmm. but I can see scars and stuff. So they calling out your, your, your injuries, your major mm-hmm. injuries. And they like, Adrian Wilson, toe pick in 98. Adrian Wilson broke his ankle in 99. Adrian Wilson, I like this. <laughs> they didn't stitch them together. <laughs> so now you got this, this, this muscle man leaving off the stage, and now you bringing me on yeah. at 175. I'm looking like a screen baby. <laughs> I ain't got injured. Yeah. I ain't never missed a game in high school, never missed a game in college. So when they called out my injury, they were like, nah, he, he had a, he hurt his ankle one time. <laughs> that, that was it. Yeah. So, but walking on that stage and turning around and yeah. this and that, it felt uncomfortable. That was uncomfortable because it wasn't just a, so, so you, you look, this is one of the moments that you you cherish. You want to cherish because you're like, man, this is. One in a lifetime. I, I get a chance to, to be amongst all these guys who, Considered the great, yeah. At what we we've, we've done to get drafted, you know, no matter what round you you get drafted, you get drafted. That's yeah. big. But when we did get on that that stage and it was the audience that we had, it was like yeah. all the media. I'm like, why are they in here? Yeah, because yeah. right. that's where I felt comfortable at. Because now I got boxer shorts on. I'm I'm practically naked. You know we what I mean? And I have no shirt on. Buck and, naked. But I'm laughing because I got nuts around me. I got Chad in there talking. He talking about he's like, man, don't take my shirt off, man. Don't <laughs> let my birds out, man. I got a bird cage. Like we were sitting out there just laughing at certain dudes. So it took your it took yeah, your mind off it a little bit. Because yeah. yeah. you're like you forget that they're like a bunch of kids, man. Just yeah. hanging out. Yeah, we are. You, man, you you just man, you in there hanging, man. And like I say, the process is different for everybody. And I could just only speak from our class. We had a lot of fun-loving kind of guys. Yeah. Like, it was like, like that's why me and Smoot probably the way we are now. And it's crazy that we're still around each other because before we even got drafted, we met each other at the Playboy Play American. Yeah. And we hit it off. And then to fast forward, I watched them. And then now we, you know, compound all that it's, stuff. It's funny when you go now, right? You can yeah. tell there's guys, like, that know each other. They see they, different schools dab each other up. Hey, man, what's up? Yeah. There's other guys that are kind of, like, mean mugging each yeah. other. Like, yeah. you know, because it's just it, everyone handles it a little bit the differently. And it, and it does show you a lot of their personality. And you mentioned the visit, man, and just how different teams handle it. Like, mm-hmm. like the team here, like, the, the, the former administration would bring guys in just to see if they got along with everybody in the building, just yeah. to kind of just have them out for a day. Yeah. But other teams use it as more of an evaluation mm-hmm. piece. So um, what you got, Jason? Robert Ferguson was the name of the wide receiver, right? Texas Robert, A&M. Boy, you good. Jason. Yeah. I looked it up. Yeah, you looked it up. Like, like, he texted Ferg, me, and I was like, Robert Robert Ferg, boy. I played against Ferg. I love college. Ferg, man. Yeah, Ferg gave me that, and he's like, damn, Tanner, boy, I thought she was a body yeah. catcher. All right, so that's – I didn't go to the Combine, obviously, but that's yeah. their experiences with the Combine. Yeah. And now let's talk about who we are most excited to see at the Combine. And remember – Ticket to the draft. We will be at the Combine. We'll be having a podcast each and every week. Producer Jason and I, we're doing yeah. it from Indianapolis. Yeah. Jag Jason, he changes, puts a different hat on for that. Just a guy. So make sure you check it out. But these are some guys that we're <laughs> excited to see how they perform yeah. at the Combine. Who wants to start off? I started off. Okay, here All we right. go. I got a long list of guys I, know, I yeah, want to see. So I got a funny story real quick. Before we yeah. came in here, I see Tana vigorously writing notes <laughs> on this piece of paper. And I was like, Tana, like, Tana's always really good about taking notes. And, I was but, there but I was like looking at this last section and I was like, it talks, it, it says your experience is on the notes. And I was yeah. like, Tana's like writing down his own experiences. Yeah. Like, and he goes, yeah, I'm taking notes. He, yeah, was, he came for me. I was kind of. Yeah. Oh yeah. You were all pissed. I, I was, was like, like bro, <laughs> I was like, man, like, what are you taking notes for? And you were like, I'm taking notes. I can't take notes. And I was like, damn. <laughs> no, no, what? no, no, no. I didn't say that. I said, you got a problem, yo? Yeah. <laughs> I, was I like, said, you got a problem? I'm taking notes. Like, and I was like, no. And well, he's like, like, what you taking notes at? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what you mean when I'm taking <laughs> no, notes at? The combine stuff. He's yeah. like, 
<laughs> oh, oh, you know what? Uh, uh, okay, Fred, you need to be doing some of this too. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. I'm like, I'm just writing some guys down that I want to see. But I literally thought you were writing notes about like your experiences, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I can't no. remember that. <laughs> no, my CTE acting up. What do you mean? I was, you know how when you caught off guard? Yeah. I'm, I'm like, was, what are you talking and about? And he was bro? like so salty about it. Then I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. But like, <laughs> yeah, I was real wrong. I'm gonna be real. All with right, you, so you guys, sorry, you wrote right, me wrong. I'm going to start off with my wide receivers. I got two wide receivers okay. I'm really watching in this draft. I right. love Xavier Leggett. Mm. Okay. And I think he's the big guy, Big guy, South Carolina, 6'1", 227. But, but might... But might run the doors off. The, I'm going to say, he going to take his shirt off at the combine, <laughs> and it's going to be a statue alert. I, I'm, I'm really, I want to see how he run. I think he's going to be more twitchier than people think he is, and I think he actually going to grade out good on stuff. But I also got uh, Malachi Crawley. I think he, Western Kentucky, wide receiver. Oh, um, oh uh, what, Malachi. Malachi Crawley, yep. Yeah, I think he... Run after the catch might be the best wide receiver in this draft. And I know people ain't going to say that because you got Malik Neighbors. You got all of these dudes in this draft. You got Marvin Harrison. Yeah. I think he might be the steal. It's Offensive tackle, I got Tyler Guyton. You know how I feel about yeah. this guy. I got a mind crush on him. I think he might run a 4-7 or 4-8 at, seven out of four eight at the awesome, combine. Yeah. All right, Jatavius Sander, tight end for Texas. I think he's going to run the doors off of this thing, and I think his draft stock is going to go sky high right. in this thing. The pass rusher, Missouri, Darius Robinson. Everybody's mm -hmm. favorite, right? Uh, listen to me. He, he kicked like 10 people out the club at the senior bowl. All right. He, he he could be one of the best pass rushers that nobody is talking about yeah. in this draft. And I think he one of those guys that if he show up at the combine and just have some crazy numbers. He takes his shirt yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, he could literally go top 15 if that's happened. But a couple of more guys, Jeremiah Trotter Jr., I want to see oh, what yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah, I, like I want to see I want to see how he runs. Linebacker. And a brother of a person that we already got here, Patrick Paul, Chris Paul, brother. Yeah. I want to see how he tests out and see what's going. Because you say you think he got heavy feet, heavy hands. I mean, he's just a – he's 6'7". He weighed in at 335 at the Senior Bowl, 35-inch arm. So when you say, like, draw up tackle measurables, like, yeah. there you go. So if he runs well, watch out. He's going to fly up draft boards. Ten, who you got? I mean, I'm, I kept it simple. I'm, I'm, one, I'm looking for these guys that – May get a nod because of how they worked out. You know yeah. what I mean? Some of the some of the top names like yeah, that's a good uh, point. Cooper DeJean, Tupa yeah, DeJean, Cooper DeJean, whatever you want to call point. You know, uh, people saying that he might be one of the better guys, but they have I think he is. They have a couple of guys going in front of him. So do yeah. this combine if he allows runs, him to go out there and say, this is going to give me the nod. You know what I mean? Because they like him. Everybody thinking highly of him. Yeah, so Cooper is Iowa, mm -hmm. cornerback, safety, linebacker yeah. type guy. Dude, his film is Sick. You know, they, they keep talking about his own. it hasn't been that many Caucasian cornerbacks, yeah. and he's a, you know, you know, I didn't want to say white boy, but, like but that, I'm just so saying, I you thought, know. I thought it was like, I thought it was a thing related to that, for yeah, sure. Yeah. But he, his film. He's a good football player. But if though. he runs yeah. fast, dude, he will be the first guy selected. Like, why, that's you, not, why you laughing, like, Fred? Hey, oh. because you said it ain't that many Caucasian cornerbacks. <laughs> it's just like having a, a, a white cornerback in the draft and a black kicker in a the A black kicker in the draft. This is a different draft. So, we used but to I, I love, really like that one, too. So guys like him. Then I got um uh, Chris Broswell. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, well. can, pass rusher. Yep. can he go up in the draft with just yep. some of the things? Like, I think the draft kind of put things in perspective for a lot of guys. You get guys that get a chance to play well throughout the season, but then you got guys that they play well enough to get an eye on them, but the combine. They don't that, test well. The combine could put them either up there or, you know, drop them a little yeah, bit. So yeah. I want to know if he moves up because of that. And I think the, the main two guys, I'm a receiver. I'm going to talk about, the to me, the guys that we probably going to have our eyes on more than anything. I want to see what Roman Malik does. I want to see if their combine, their forty, Tuesday. if their forty, going to separate them or put them in a, a era where they say, well, hey, maybe he might be a little. Because I just think Marvin Harrison Jr. I don't think there's no competition when it comes to what we seen him yeah. do on the field. Yeah. But hey, if these guys test better, who knows? Who yeah. knows how he's going to test? You can't you know take nothing away from the other dude. You seen guy after guy, time after time, go out there and run a forty, and that yeah. changes them from, from being a late grounder to to a top, you know, first rounder. So. Yeah. Those are the guys that stood out to me and, and Coleman. 
Uh, Keon, Keon Coleman from Florida State. Oh, dude, that I is love a, you love that, that guy. one. I love the. I mean, just his his physical attributes, man. To be able to be a punt returner with that body, he's got to run though. Man, yeah. he has to run. So I want to see if like if he's a guy that's going to test well enough to yeah. say, hey, maybe we might have to take him. And, to may, the and maybe top he's a guy five. that don't test well but can play. See, yeah. that's the yeah. thing yeah. about the combine that kills me sometimes. Yeah. A guy can show up and just not run well in front of people, who, but who, then we put him on the football field and he kills people. Who is the guy with the Kool Aid name from Alabama? Them. Kool Aid, Kool Aid, McKinstry. McKinstry. McKinstry, yeah. I knew he McKinstry. I'm like, who is that? Yeah. Fred ain't talking about Kool Aid. Kool Aid, like, because his his teammate outplayed him. Yeah, he did. Uh, uh, um, like, uh, Tyron Arnold, Arnold. Yeah, Tyron Arnold. Yeah, kind of outplayed Kool Aid McKinstry. And then I hope he one of those guys. But he got an interesting name. Yeah, you know, he's I, a I, name that I'm pretty he's sure he's, that good, he's a good football player. No, yeah. I, I hope he one of them players that actually blossoms in the league. Yeah. You know how you yeah. you show flashes in yeah. college, but then when I get to the league now, I turn into myself. I think that's what's going to happen with Kool-Aid. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, the Keon Coleman one from Florida State, the receiver, 6'4", about 210, 215. Like, if he runs even a little fast, yeah. like, he, the, he the, narrative, the narrative around him changes completely. And I yeah. think that's one of the things that – that's what the combine does. Yeah. So, a couple guys for me, Chop Robinson, the edge, man. I expect him to blow the doors off that sucker. Like, right. and, and that's what everyone's expecting, right? Uh, uh, defensive end from Penn State, probably a second-round player, but could easily, if he runs – could four, go to four, the first round, yeah. yeah. Bump into the first round. Uh, Lat, uh, Latu Latu from UCLA. Yeah. Everyone Latu, says he's not going to test well, yep. but is it that bad? Because mm -hmm. if he tests even pretty good, he'll, he'll be the, first, he'll yeah. be the yeah. first guy selected. Yeah. Uh, Quinion Mitchell, the cornerback from Toledo. I just read somewhere that they yeah. think he's going to run a sub 4-3. Mm. So we got gas. He's six foot. He's 200 pounds. Like, that'll get you drafted. That'll get you drafted, right? Yeah. So I want to see what that looks like. And then a receiver that I'm really excited to watch is the other receiver from Florida State mm. is uh, Johnny Wilson. 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 I mean, when you're 6'6", six, six, you're I, six, I heard seven. seven. I heard what, what is Smith he? just bashed him. Though. That, yeah, he got after he him a little bit. He killed he got after him. He him a bit. What is he? Is he a tight end? Uh, but I, uh, is he a wide receiver? But that's what I'm saying. Like, <sighs> if you run a 4'4 four, four and you're 6'6, six, 6'7, six, six, better put him out. 240. He like, let that man work. Tight. I mean, UCLA wide receivers back in 2000. Them, yeah. them dudes were. Yeah. All statues. 35 inch yeah. arms, man. I just want to see what that Stokes looks like. And the rest of those guys. At the JJ. Senior Bowl, dude, Tana, at the Senior Bowl, he didn't lose a one on one. But like got hurt on the second day, so I just want to see what that mm, looks like. Yeah. Um, and again, Roman Wilson, another receiver, the guy from Michigan, yeah, supposed yeah, yeah. track guy. I want to see that cook a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to think of one offensive lineman that I want to see run. Let me think about it. I want to. Sorry, it ain't guy because guy is no, no. Ex running you, back. You, but you already took yeah, guy, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm trying to think of somebody else that would fit that mold. Yeah. And for me, it's probably. Um, the kid from Penn State. What's his name, Jason? Alfredino? No, um, Fashano. Fish Olu Fashano. Because yeah. when you watch him on film. Dude can cook. So if he runs like a sub four nine, like he might be the best tackle in the draft. But those are kind of some Question. guys. You you a combine guy, and mm -hmm. I'm not sure how this helps these guys or where, where do they even slide in at. This past weekend they had the HBCU combine. Yes, yeah. And I saw a kid from. He's a local kid. He's from my hometown. He played at a, played at one of my rival high schools. Like he's, he's a cornerback, five nine, ran a four three. Yeah. Do that. Get these guys like having that. Having the film to go with it and be able to go out there and produce in that fashion, yep. HBCU, are these guys getting a nod? Uh, so you know, I'll, I'll getting a you, look. I'll a tell you how look? that works. So this is how I do it, and this is how I've talked to a lot of scouts who do it. So you get a list, and the list is, you know, 300, 400 guys, mm -hmm. right? And so one of the things I do <clears throat> after the combine is I just go through and I say, offensive lineman, how long are your arms? How tall are you? Mm -hmm. And then – that's how you get into some small school guys because yeah. you've got the frame. Yeah. So yeah. you circle them. So if I see someone run a 4-3, you better believe I'm checking out their film. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's just a nice thing. Like, that's what this combine is. It's like, mm -hmm. so for example, Xavier Leggett right now is sliding down draft boards a little yeah. bit because they're like, doesn't adjust the ball well. But if he runs a 4-2. He's going right back up. Everyone's going to be yeah. like, he's fast. We can work with that. Mm -hmm. It just gives you an athletic profile yeah. Yeah. and kind of gives you – Jason said this, the bike wheel analogy, right? Mm. How full is the bike wheel specifically as an athlete? Yeah. And obviously the film's got to line up, but especially for the second half of the draft, mm. like who's that guy that's got the traits? Yeah. It's got mm -hmm. the, the, D, the the pass rusher that runs yeah. a four six, but he's got 35 inch arms yep. and he's 245. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. let's circle that guy. Cause those traits play well at the next level. It's like how I think part of the reason how they found Andre Jones is a good example. Mm. He measured really well for 34 and a half inch arms, mm. 240, you had a decent 40, at his pro day because he yeah. pulled his hamstring at the combine. At the combine. Yep. And so then you say, oh, this guy's got the athletic profile to get that done. So that's where I think that combine stuff really and helps you out. you got to realize, like, it's a couple of teams that major in small school guys. Mm -hmm. Green Bay, for instance, they love to get 
guys with chips on their show. You look at the Dunner Drivers, the Brett Favre's, everybody. They they major in small school, HBCUs, all that. Pittsburgh Steelers, another team that major in finding diamonds in the rough. Yep. And they do that through small schools. They like the, what they call the small school chip. Because I asked one of my homeboys that played for Green Bay, mm-hmm. like, why are most of y'all from, like, small schools? And, like, they like to do it mm-hmm. in that manner because it, it automatically comes with a built-in chip. Yeah, absolutely. And just a reminder, we will be covering this every single day on the Ticket to the Draft podcast, which is on where you ever get your podcasts. Every day we're going to give updates, podcasts, information about that. But guys, thank you so much for joining. Please like and subscribe wherever you got to get this contest and content. And please make sure you join us next week. We are brought to you by Bet365. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. We believe that every sport should be epic. That's why we offer an in-game experience which covers over 78 sports and over 780,000 live streams to 90 million customers worldwide. Our online betting brand is powered by a world-class proprietary product and over 7,000 employees across the globe. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365, the official sporting betting partner of your Washington Commanders. Must be 21 plus and physically located in Virginia. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-GAMBLER.